Hello again. Uh, as I promised you, I'm here with an example of the logarithmic decrement or log decrement uh, and how it applies to the design of a suspension system of, in this case, uh, a motorcycle, let's say. So here, let's say you're told, you're given that the mass of this motorcycle is 200 kilograms, right? 200 kilograms. And also the total stiffness, as you could see, we have half of K on each end to make it symmetric. And K is equal to, let's say, 80,000, 80,000 newtons per meters, okay? And what is unknown here is the damping coefficient C. Uh, and you want to design this, uh, in other words, you want to select a damping coefficient C such that the first amplitude, so if this is hit, uh, you know, the, the tire hits a bump, and the first amplitude, say, X1 is equal to, say, 10 inch, right, then you want the vibration to be arrested quickly, so you want the second amplitude to be one inch, so the ratio is going to be 10. Now, you guys recall that the, uh, so our objective is to find C, so that the system behaves like this. So you guys remember that, first of all, the, the whole concept of log decrement applies to uh, on the dam system, which means zeta has to be uh, larger than zero, the damping ratio larger than zero and smaller than one. Now, we also defined delta in the previous uh, video as a natural log of x1 to x2. And that's equal to actually to 2 pi zeta over square root of 1 minus zeta squared. And also another formula that we got which was very really useful is that once we um, got delta in terms of zeta, eventually you want to find zeta in terms of delta. So delta and that equation becomes delta divided by 4 pi squared plus delta squared. Okay, so now look, we, we can go ahead and find delta. Delta is natural log of x1 over x2, so that's given you want it to be the ratio of 10 to 1. So natural log of 10 is about 2.3. So now you know your delta is 2.3, so you can go ahead and plug it in here and here and solve directly for uh, zeta. So zeta is going to be equal to 2.3 divided by square root of 4 pi squared plus 2.3 squared, and that comes out to be 0.344, and it should be, remember, between 0 and 1, because if you have an over damp system, the concept of log decrement, or critically damp system, this concept doesn't apply. So now, going back to the definition of uh, zeta, zeta is equal to, you could write it actually as C divided by 2 square root of uh, km. Actually, this could be also written as C divided by 2m omega n. And by the way, omega n, we could calculate that is the square root of k over m, which is the square root of 80,000 divided by 200, and that becomes 400. So therefore, your omega n is going to be 20 radians per second. So now look, by just cross multiplication, C becomes 2m omega n times zeta. So mass is 200 kilograms, right? Let me get rid of this. And so 2 times 200 kilograms times 20 radians per second times the zeta, which we ended up getting 0.344. And that gives us roughly a C, we have done some rounding off here, about 2,750. 2,750 Newton seconds per meter. So you see, we found the damping coefficient 
based on the output that we wanted. And that's the whole idea of design. So we had a fixed constraint on the mass, let's say, on the stiffness. Now, of course, you could have a fixed damping coefficient and then change the mass or the stiffness accordingly. Okay? Thank you for listening.